my name is Lena and welcome to yet another push to tutorial on my channel. Today I'm gonna be talking about some of the more secret features of Ableton Push 2 that you might not be as obvious as just the kind of like regular oh here's a button it does it thing things. So if you really want to learn Push 2 even more and deeper and make it more effective to your workflow and performance and studio life, then please watch this video because this darling, this babe, has so much more to offer. Okay? <laughs> Hi and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. As you know, I'm obsessed about Push 2 and I think you are as well because you're on my channel. So subscribe right now to this channel because there's actually a playlist full of Push 2 tutorials as well as Ableton Live tutorials and more are coming. So yeah! Hit the bell icon also. Let's get into this tutorial. So as we know, you can change, you can add a device and you can add a track from the buttons on the right corner. But did you know that you can actually change the individual drum rack sounds in a really easy steps on a stage without triggering the samples, but same time still selecting it and changing it to something else? that is possible. First, what you need to make sure is that the device screen is activated and that happens from the top right corner of your push. Select the clip that you would like to change. On the screen, you can see that it says 64 pad dub drum or whatever the instrument is called that you're using. On the right side there, it shows a little square. You activate the button that has the little square on it. That will take you to the individual settings of that sample. After this, you will go to the browse mode. So from the device mode, we will go to the browse mode and you have the browser on your screen. You select the drum and you press load. But what you can do also is that if you want to use Push 2 to kind of see which, which drum would you actually ultimately want to use, now on the right lower corner of the screen, you can see that it says load next. So now you can just browse all the different sounds for your drum rack by pressing it and it will change it automatically. On the top right corner it says load previous and you can just go around and change them. So when you did those steps you managed to change one of the drum samples. So then if you go back to the device mode you can see the drum rack on the top, uh, top line of the screen and you can just go back and play it and now the sound has been changed but what if you're on a stage and you would like to change it without activating it so you might have been thinking what does the buttons shift and select do well se shift and select i will be talking about them a lot today and to be honest they open so many new things and features for push 2 so if you press down select and up and you click one of the samples it doesn't activate it but it selects, it selects it. So this allows you to do now the same steps and go and change the sample if you wish without activating it. Another way of uh, selecting it without activating it is in the bottom, uh, bottom row of your screen. So where it says the instrument, you just click that once and it will open all the instruments and all the different samples that are on your drum rack. And from there you can go with the arrow selectors of your push to and go left and right and select which clip you want to select. And then you can do the whole thing again, go browse and just change the instrument of a singular sample of your drum rack. So the next thing I will talk to you about is the step sequence with your drum rack and how you can actually manipulate and use these uh, samples in a drum rack with the sequence, the example light performance situation. More, better, more, better, better. <laughs> fade in, fade out and transpose settings. Did you know that? Huh. So that is super cool. But also what you can do, you can mute and solo these clips in your step sequencer and that is so useful.
So actually to perform, you might not need to be in the in the 60s for view with the push two or being in the session view. You can also perform just with the step sequencer, putting the different sections of the song in your step sequencer, and then you can just mute and bring them in the way that you want them to come in and yeah. That is so useful. Okay, number three, what I will talk about is the metronome and uh, shift preview cue. So when you activate the metronome, you can hear it, right? When you press play. But what if you would actually want just to see the netro, netro, meh, metronome plinking? So you get the tempo, the visual aid of the tempo of the button plinking in the actual tempo, but you would not like to hear it on the stage. Well, adjusting the cue, you just press down shift and you adjust the main control volume on the top right corner. So in Ableton Live, uh, that is the same thing as the headphones icon on your master channel on Ableton Live. Hold down shift and you turn the cue to the bottom completely off. And that's how you still see the tempo, but you can't hear any of it. If you do activate the count in on your Ableton Live session, then you can see it on the top bar of your screen and you will see it when it counts in and that's where it's time to start playing. Okay, then number four. <laughs> number four tip is actually record arming the tracks, audio tracks, when you are on your push to. And I honestly, when I figured this out, I was just like, it saved me so much time because I don't need to go to user mode and mini map all this. There, I can just record arm everything on push to. Yes. So how you actually do that is that you literally hold down record button and click the track that you would like to record on. That's how it's done. You hold down the record button and you click the track that you would like to record on. And it's record abled. Ha! Okay, so next thing is the button shift. Shift actually does so many things that are more hidden, they're less obvious things, and you just need to, it does so much. So I can just go through some of my favorite features in this video. So firstly, shift fine tunes everything. We can fine tune any of the faders in the smallest increments. Is increment the right words? So we can uh, we can fine tune everything we want to a small and more smaller increments. Increments increments. <laughs> you go to mix window, you want to adjust the volume into smaller increments. You hold down shift, you adjust the fader. You want to adjust the tempo into smaller increments. Well, hold down shift and adjust the tempo from the left top corner. If you're on a device and you have an effect, you have something that you would like to slower, fine adjust you just hold down shift and any of the macros of your controller will then work in smaller increments. Another thing you can do, not there, not this, another, another thing you can do with shift is actually redo. So we have undo with button. So we have the actual undo button. But did you know you can redo by pressing shift and it will do redo with what you just undid. Undid, undoed. <laughs> what you just undid. <sighs> yes, you can. Same thing with automation. You created automation, you overdrove it, overdrove it, you overdrived it, you um, deleted basically what you just automated. And how do you actually bring it back? Press shift down and click automation. That's how you reactivate automation again on a track. Perfect. Perfection. Oh my God, so the next thing is so great. So you know like how you can be jamming in your session view and you can just have a really good groove on and everything works well, but you would like to suddenly record everything that you are jamming into arrangement view. But then you would need to activate arrangement view and go and record. And then how can you then record everything you're doing in session view to arrangement view? But you can just by pressing shift and record and it starts recording everything into arrangement view. Again. 
And you know what? The same thing happens reversed when you're in a range mode view and that's been activated when you press shift and record. It will actually activate the session record button so that just the circle in the session view. It will activate that. <laughs> And if you are in a range mode view example and you want to go to the beginning of the whole session and listen to the whole thing, but instead of changing the transport bar all the way to the beginning, you can just press shift and play and that will take you from where you are to the beginning. So 1.1.1 location. Perfect. Okay, so that's everything from this time. But there is actually other push to techniques like this that I have figured it out. So if you do want me to do another video of similar kind of more hidden, more specific uh, techniques, then please let me know down in the comments and I will make you that video. Just in this point, make sure that you also check all my other push to videos. I have plenty. I have a whole playlist, so I have linked them down below. Uh, subscribe to this channel, click the bell icon, and I will see you every Sunday on this channel. So I will be here on Sunday and I hope to see you again soon. Okay, see you next time.